Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Raw Built. I'm your host, Rob, and today I've got a shorty, but a goodie. It actually was my nickname back in high school. Anyway. Today I'm gonna to be teaching you how to hang a shade sail. This is a really simple project and a very low cost. Uh, you can get shade sails anywhere from $20 to $100 depending on the size that you need. Now, if you look behind me, you see that I actually already have a shade sail. Shade sail, shade sail, shade sail, shade sail. Hashtag. This is my first attempt at doing it and it's a triangular shape, which uh, in theory sounded good, but it doesn't actually give me a lot of coverage. You can kind of see the shadow here, I'm pretty sure. Uh, but the actual coverage is like very small and you need to sit in that one spot to get any kind of shade, which sort of the which sort of, <laughs> which sort of defeats the purpose. If you want to do a triangle shade sail, that's totally fine, but you're going to need to do multiple. Uh, I'm going to be teaching you how to do a rectangular one today. Uh, now a couple things to note when you're doing this, uh, you can use rope. Mine actually came with rope, or you can use cable railing if you want kind of a more aesthetic modern look, which is what I'm going to be teaching you how to do today. And whenever you're hanging your shade sail, you don't want to hang it perfectly flat. You actually want to do, uh, you want to do it at an angle because they're not quite as porous as you think. So whenever it rains, water doesn't actually go through it, it runs off. If you can help it, you want to try and control where that rain is running off. Now you can actually do this multiple ways. You can completely raise one side of the shade sail and lower the other, or you can take every corner and put it at a different elevation. Personally, I like stretching it out as much as I can and giving every single corner a different height because it gives it kind of a quirky circus tent type of look. Of course, it's personal preference and everyone's entitled to their own wrong opinions. So you don't have to hang yours like mine. There are, really man, you're driving a truck in the middle of the day. There are a hundred different ways to hang a shade sail. This is just one of them. Now, something else to keep in mind is you don't want to get a shade sail that's the exact size of the area that you're trying to cover. You want it to be a little bit smaller because you need to leave a little bit of room for the actual rope or cable to grab onto whatever you're attaching it to. My deck is 18 feet by eight feet. I chose a shade sail that's six by 15 feet to give me a few feet on each corner uh, because I want my cable to show a little bit more because I think that kind of adds to the look. Now let's get into the actual components that you're gonna need for this build. All right, you got your tensioner, also called the turnbuckle, turnbuckle. You've got a crimp, and this is what you're gonna be running your cable through. Now there are a couple ways you can get this. You can get a kit on Amazon. Uh, depending on how big the kit is, it could be $10 to $30. Now you can buy these pieces from Home Depot. Uh, they sell crimps there and they sell turnbuckles there. Uh, given that you're only gonna need four, I would recommend doing that. I had a couple left over from a railing tutorial that I did a couple months ago. So if you're interested in learning how to do cable railing on decks or uh, stair railing, be sure to check that tutorial out. Um, and then I've got this cable right here. It's a three millimeter cable. Uh, you can get this from Harbor Freight, 100 feet of this for $10, which I think is probably the cheapest deal you're gonna get. Home Depot also sells this, but I think it would be about $20. And then lastly, you've got your uh, slagging tool. Uh, this, a slagging tool or a bolt cutter to actually make your crimps. So here's how this is gonna work when you're doing your actual cable railing. You're gonna run your cable through your crimp. And then you're gonna put it through your turnbuckle. Then you're gonna take your cable and run it through the other side of the crimp, like so. Okay, once you have it through, you're gonna pull your crimp up, like so. And then you're gonna crimp it down with your bolt cutters. I'll do this on camera, I'm probably gonna look like a fool. Um, that's okay. and it's crimped. You're gonna to wanna to completely open your fasteners to the widest position. So you have more leeway for actually tightening your cable. I moved my camera because it was getting very hot in the grass. Okay, so your shade sail is gonna have a corner like this. You're gonna do the same thing with the other side of your cable. This isn't exactly it, but you know, for the purposes of, for demonstrative purposes. So what you're gonna do, same thing, run your cable through, no problemo. Run it through this corner. Run it through your crimp again. 
and then uh, crimp it, crimp it down. Now, depending on where you're actually hanging it, you're gonna have to pre-measure out your cable. You wanna try to be as exact as possible here. One thing I can't stress enough is the importance of planning and pre-measuring. Now, remember I said that my sail shade is my shade sail. I don't remember what it is anymore. Honestly, with the pandemic, I don't remember who I am anymore. Who am I? So remember, I have about two feet on each corner for me personally. So I wanna make sure that I give myself two feet starting from the turnbuckle, turnbuckle to here. Uh, to the other side of the cable, because remember, we need it to be very tight. So if it's two feet from here, then we can start tightening the turnbuckle and creating tension. If you make it too long, you're not actually gonna be able to tighten your shade sail, and uh, you're gonna have to start over on that corner. All right, we good? We good, baby? Let's get into it. First thing you're gonna wanna do is lay out your shade sail to approximately position it in the space that it's gonna be covering. You want to measure out the space from your shade cell to your wall or post on both sides and make sure that it's even. Take your time making micro adjustments until it's perfectly even because it's ultimately going to determine your cable lengths. I had about two feet of space on each side of the sail, so I rough hung the first corner using 24 inches of cable. Then I did the same thing on the other side just to double check that my math worked out. I didn't have a lot of cable on me and I didn't want to have to go out and buy more, so I really made sure to triple check my measurements. From there, I started tightening my sail by pulling my cable tight. Then I double checked to make sure that I had 24 inches of cable on both sides before making my final cuts. You don't want to completely tighten your cable at the very beginning of this, save that for the end. But you do want to have your cables relatively tense. Notice here how the left corner is higher than the right. That's intentional as I'm trying to create a slope for rain runoff. Okay, so one, oh! I'll just edit that out. Another thing that I forgot to mention, whenever you're actually trying to hang the shade sail, the loop on the cable, you're gonna want one of these open-ended hooks right here. It's a screw on one side and then it's a hook right here. Just use a drill to do your pilot hole and then it screws right in. These were already in for me, so there's no need for me to reinstall it. I thought about unscrewing it and then pretending like I installed it for the tutorial, but I'm a man of integrity. Kill me, <laughs> no, sue me. Once I felt pretty sure that my measurements checked out, then I started assembling my cable rail components. Remember, you run your crimp through the cable, then your cable through the shade cell loop, and then your cable back through the crimp, and then you crimp your crimp with the bolt cutter. You can cut your cable in a variety of ways. I chose to use a grinder for this because it's fastest. Just be sure to wear safety goggles unlike my dumb self because it's a very dangerous tool. From there, I started gradually tightening each cable by rotating my turnbuckle. I wanted this to be a little tighter to make sure that my back corner cable measurements were even more precise. Then I made my final crimp and cut with an angle grinder and moved to the back corner. Once I measured and assembled my back cable, it was time to hang my back hook. Again, I drilled a pilot hole to make screwing this in way easier. It's not 100% necessary per se, but there's also no reason to be a hero, Steve. Just take my advice on this one. And then it was time for the last corner. Same process here, only this time the hook is even lowered to create my rain slope. So at this point, all four corners are at different elevations. And now for the final payoff, tightening every turnbuckle, turnbuckle by hand. You'll notice that I actually rotated my turnbuckle in the back left corner in the wrong direction. So that corner came flying off. Rookie mistake. I don't even know why you're following this guy. And once everything is tightened, you are all set and ready to sit under your newly installed shade cell with a nice ice cold crispy boy or LaCroix or whatever your beverage of choice is. All in all, this was a very simple project that I think anybody can pull off. And if you don't have any power tools, you can definitely make do with the provided rope that comes with your shade cell. If someone is helping you, then this project should take less than an hour. All right, I guess that's all. Don't forget to exterminate that subscribe button and hit like. It really would mean the world to me and my dog, Ellie. I guess I'll see you on the next episode of Rob Built, where I teach you how to properly tickle a ferret.